All right, guys, so Project Eris has finally come around and it is now public. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to upgrade from BleemSync to this new version for the PlayStation Classic. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right guys, so before we get started, I gotta ask you if you haven't already, please go down below the video and subscribe to the channel. I can't explain to you just how much it means to me and how much it helps the channel grow and uh, how much it's actually gonna help support the channel going forward. So if you haven't done so, I ask that if you like the types of videos that I put out, please consider subscribing. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get this thing started. We have been waiting quite a while for Project Eris to finally show its face. Now, a week ago, I posted a little teaser video to kind of show you guys what you could get. It's finally out now. We've got lots of add-ons, lots of plugins, and we've got a really awesome operating system. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Now, as always, I am using release candidate software, which means it's not the officially released software, and I get it in advance. But as always, I will leave links in the description down below so you guys can just go ahead and download everything that you're gonna need very easily. So, as I said, I've got my release candidate software. I've already extracted it. You just right click on it and you extract it to its own folder. So we've got our folder. We are going to double click on it and take a look to see what all comes inside. And as you guys can see, we actually have three folders. So we've got our payload folder, we've got a new Project Eris folder, and we've got a ROMs folder. This ROMs folder is going to be used for emulation station. And if you double click on it, it's gonna have all the different uh, emulators or consoles that you could possibly use on this system uh, ready to go in there. So going back to the root of that folder, we are ready to go. What we need to do is pop in our old Bleem Sync build. So I've actually got mine preloaded up. Let me just go ahead and grab that. Here it is. And uh, one thing I do want to mention here is that the upgrade will work from Bleem Sync uh, over to Project Eris. Additionally, you can use the same method if you are starting from scratch, but there is a slight difference here. So if this is your first time installing Project Eris on a brand new PlayStation Classic, you are going to need to format your USB drive to FAT32, and then you are going to need to label it Sony in all caps, just like it is here. And then you would simply drag these folders onto the USB drive, let it transfer over, and that's all that you need to do until we get to the next step. If you are upgrading like I am, you're gonna have all of your old files and folders here. Again, same thing. We're gonna just drag and we're gonna drop it onto our USB. It's now going to calculate and it's going to say, hey, wait a second, we got a bunch of files that are in the same name. Do you want to replace those files? The answer to that is yes. If you are on a Mac, you want to merge those files. While we're waiting for all this to happen, what I'm going to go ahead and do is fast forward through this transfer. Okay guys, so that transfer is now 100% complete and this is where we start getting into some of the more complicated stuff. Now don't get me wrong, this is not a difficult process, but we do have to take a step back and realize what's gonna be happening next on the PlayStation Classic. So Project Eris has its own custom kernel. Just like with BleemSync, we have to load this kernel into the PlayStation Classic. It's going to modify a few of the files internally that will allow for a lot of the different changes that are gonna be happening with Project Eris. So we need to make sure that we plug our USB into the second controller port. You cannot upgrade from BleemSync to Project Eris using OTG. So again, very important, you need to take that USB and you need to plug it into the second controller port on your PlayStation Classic. It is also important to note that because we are using the second controller port, you're either going to need a compatible USB drive that you would have used to initially flash your PlayStation Classic with BleemSync, or you're going to need a powered USB hub connected into your second controller port. Either way, it will work. The USB that I use does work, and I've got links to those in the description down below if you need them. I'm using the 128 gig version, which I've got linked below. The other thing that I need to mention is that if you are upgrading from BleemSync, 
you do not need your USB to be formatted to FAT32. That is only if you have never used the Bleem Sync on your PlayStation Classic before. So if you are formatted as XFAT, that's totally fine. You can leave it the way it is. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to pop our USB drive into our PlayStation Classic. One last thing to mention as well before we actually get this console up and running and starting to install that kernel is that you want to make sure that your power cord and your HDMI cord are completely disconnected from the device before you pop in your USB drive. And the order you want to reconnect everything is first you plug in the USB drive, then you plug in your HDMI cord, then you plug in your power cord, then you power on the console. So with that USB that's connected now into the front port of our PlayStation Classic and we power it on with a normal USB cord, what we're actually going to see during the entire process is that the power button of the PlayStation Classic is going to flash green and red. And that's gonna happen during the entire installation process. Next, what we're gonna see on screen is our Project Iris wallpaper. And then on top of that, it's just gonna let us know what it's doing. So the very first step that it's gonna do is it's going to create a file system backup. Now this process actually takes a little bit longer than everything else. You can expect to sit here for about two to three minutes or so, sometimes a little bit quicker, but it is a little bit of a lengthy process. The next step here is that it's going to create a recovery partition backup. And that's gonna be handy so that way if anything happens in the future, there is a way to restore your device back to stock. Next, it's going to create the internal kernel backup and that's gonna be the same process that we had with BleemSync. And then after that's all complete, it's going to initialize and then reboot. Now again, depending on whether or not you are upgrading or if this is a fresh install, if you are upgrading, it will automatically boot into Project Iris and you'll be on the main screen. That being said, if you are not and you are using a fresh USB stick with a brand new PlayStation Classic and you formatted your USB to FAT32, you are going to get a prompt on screen stating that FAT32 formatted devices are not supported by Project Iris. So what you're going to need to do at this point is take your USB drive and plug it back into your computer. Now I do want to be incredibly clear, this step is only for people who are using USBs that are formatted as FAT32. If you are using NTFS or XFAT, you are completely fine, you do not need to do this step. But if you are using FAT32, what you're going to need to do is copy all of your stuff off of the USB drive, you're going to dump it onto your desktop, you're going to then right click on your USB, you are going to format it, and you are going to format it as either XFAT or NTFS. It's your choice. The recommended format is NTFS, but XFAT does work just the same. So you would select it, you would keep it labeled as Sony, and you would start that process. Now, I don't need to because my device is already formatted as XFAT, but again, if you are FAT32, this is an important step. Once it is formatted, you'll grab your files off of your desktop or whatever folder you copied them into, and you're just gonna retransfer them back onto the USB drive, and that's it. Then you can plug that USB drive into the OTG adapter if you've got it, or back into the secondary controller port of your PlayStation Classic and get this thing up and running. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take my USB port, connect it into the OTG adapter, and we're gonna jump over to the PlayStation Classic now. All right guys, so hopefully you got everything going and you are now sitting on your boot menu. As you can see, we have access to RetroArch, Project Iris, and Emulation Station. Now, Emulation Station, I had made a video a little while ago showing you guys how to set it up for the Genesis Mini. It's the same process. You need to make sure that you've got all the cores. Once you've got all the cores in the proper folder and some games in that ROMs folder, then you should be able to get this up and running and start playing your games through Emulation Station. Now, in terms of all of the features that we've got available to us, if we go into our L1 settings, you can see that we've got a ton of options here. And there's a bunch of things just that are personal preferences. For example, display games in alphabetical order, launch games in RetroArch from stock UI. Uh, there's a whole ton of things in here like networking support, Bluetooth support, uh, display RetroArch loading screen, uh, even things like if you want to turn off the boot menu music, which I've already done. 
any of those things that you want to do, you can actually do them right from within here. So one important thing, of course, is going to be turning on our network support. Once you make any changes in the settings section and you press start to save and reset, it's going to say, hey, we want to overwrite the old settings. The console is going to shut down after saving. Is that OK? I'm going to hit yes, and then we're going to boot it right back up. Okay, perfect. So we are back to our boot menu. In order to set up networking, we just have to hit our R1 button. And what you're going to be able to do is see any of the available networks that are within your area. You're going to select it and then you're going to enter your password. And then you're just going to connect and you are good to go. So we're going to go ahead and go on back. And what I'm going to do is show you one last thing before we jump into Project Eris. If you want, for example, to always load directly into uh, retro arc you can do that by pressing the toggle auto boot button which is the triangle button you can see auto boot has been set which now means that we're going to skip over this boot menu altogether and every time that we turn on our console it's just going to load directly into retro arc now of course there's always going to be a way to back into the boot menu whether it's closing retro arc or whatever it happens to be but if you know that you're going to spend 95 percent of your time in retro arc that's a good option in order to turn that off, you just press the triangle button again, and it'll say that it's been unset. So that is how you would set up a direct boot into whatever platform you are looking to run. Now with all of those sort of things covered, let's go ahead and jump into Project Eris. All right, so now we have jumped right on into Project Eris, and as you can see, all of our games that we had on our BleemSync build have been pulled forward. Now, if this is a new build for you, obviously you won't have any new games, but if you did, they should port over and you shouldn't have any problems. Everything should be there, including any save states that you would have created. Uh, additionally, the same goes for RetroArch. If you had playlists created and you had put a lot of work into your build, that should all get pulled forward so you won't lose any of that data. Now, this is going to look a lot like BleemSync, and that's what its intention was. It wasn't to drastically change things and confuse people. It's to give people a sense of familiarity with what they're going to be using. So don't really look at this as some crazy big change. We just have a lot more features available to us uh, with Project Iris. Now, aside from our games, some of the big changes here are that we actually have some folder options. So as you can see, I created a folder that is just going to have Crash Bandicoot games, but you can actually create an unlimited number of folders. You go into your folder menu by pressing the X button, and then from here, as you can see, I did create my Crash Bandicoot folder, but if you wanted to create a new one, you've got all your instructions along the bottom of the screen. So you can cycle through them, you can press start to open up a folder, you can press X to edit an existing folder, you can delete folders, you can add a new folder as well. So let's go ahead and add a new folder with the square button. Then as you can see here, we can go ahead and label it. And in this case, what I'm going to go ahead and do is get rid of that new folder label, and we're just gonna label this as We'll just call it sports for right now. Once that's done, you're gonna hit the start button. And as you can see, it is now uh, replaced the label uh, with the sports title. Additionally, you can go over to the folder itself and press X on it, and you can actually select a different type of folder. And what they've done is they've preloaded a bunch of different images for those folders. So you can have alphabetical folders, you can have just a Mod My Classic logo, uh, and then additionally, they've also included a whole bunch of other things if you go down with different types of games. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and choose the uh, just the PlayStation logo. Uh, I think I'll go with this one right here. And then in terms of adding games. So once we get into here, we can actually select multiple different types of games. We're able to select both internal games, which were preloaded onto the PlayStation Classic, as well as any of the games that we wanted to load onto our USB drive. And the way that you'll filter through that is just by pressing the triangle button. So as you can see, I've got the games that I personally loaded up onto here, but if I press the triangle button, I'm now going to have access to the preloaded games uh, that the uh, console would have come with. So you can actually mix and match. I'm going to go ahead and grab a few sports titles. I'll grab uh, Ridge Racer Type 4. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and grab some of the games over here. Uh, Gran Turismo. We're going to go ahead and go down to our Tony Hawk Pro Skater. And we're going to throw in some of the wrestling games as well. Once we are happy with our selection, we're going to go ahead and press the start button. Now we've got eight games selected, we've got our folder art selected, and we've got our folder name done. All we need to do is press start. And as you can see now, we have 
a sports folder, and we have a Crash Bandicoot folder. If we go back, and now we should see the new folders available for us. So as you can see, we do have our sports folder here, and we've got our Crash Bandicoot folder. If we enter our sports folder by pressing the X button, it's gonna go ahead and take us into all of the games that we selected. And additionally, we'll have access to all of the other ports that we had uh, installed on our PlayStation Classic, but all of the games that we wanted for this folder will be available. Now, in order to get out of here, you simply have to go over to your folder menu, press the X button. And then from here, we just have to press the circle back button. It's going to prompt us if we're sure that we want to exit without selecting a folder, we're going to highlight yes, and we're gonna hit the X button again. And there we are. So now we are back on our main screen. So as you can see, we have access to RetroArch right from the main carousel. We've got our game manager, and this is going to be a feature that essentially allows you to edit or change some of the information about whatever specific game you've got. So in here, we're gonna look at Alundra. If we press X, we can change the game title, we can change the publisher, the release year, uh, things like that. And uh, one last thing before we wrap up, in my preview video, I did show off a bunch of the add-ons that are going to be available and that are available already. For example, the PlayStation Portable Standalone Emulator. I'm going to be doing a standalone video probably later on tonight or tomorrow or sometime in the next couple of days. And I'll probably be putting out a bunch of those videos over the course of the next week or two, just to kind of get you guys up and running that way. I didn't want to bog down this video with another 20 minutes of install on standalone cores and things like that. So uh, stay tuned for that, but I will show you guys in detail how to do it. That being said, I will leave a link in the description down below to the repository where you can access all those add-ons. All of the add-ons do have a readme with very clear instructions. So feel free to go ahead and jump on that if you feel comfortable doing it. If not, I'll have some videos coming out. I'll show you guys how to get PSP up and running, Drastic, and even Windows 3.1 on our PlayStation Classic, which a lot of people have been asking for. But that is more or less it. This is Project Eris. It has finally arrived. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Like I said, I've got tons more content coming out. There's a lot of stuff we can do with this build. So I'm gonna definitely do some updated videos down the road, but I also have a ton of other content and I would really, really appreciate your support. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you did not like it. Let me know in the comment section below what kind of ports you guys wanna see on this thing. Is there anything specifically that you think can run on the PlayStation Classic that we haven't seen yet? And if so, let me know down below what that is and we'll see about getting that up and running. But that's more or less all I've got for you. Thank you so very much for watching, and I will talk to you guys again real soon.